So if you could read Art's question to me, and I'll just say a little bit about what we're going to look at in this video. So the shoreline effect is driven through the ambient channel, and uh, hopefully, as you can see in this little picture here, along the edge, you, what you can do is you can lighten the terrain material so that it, it lights up underneath the water and makes it look like foam along the edge of the water because otherwise the water being an infinite plane or another terrain may not necessarily be aware in any sense that it's uh, in a collision with another object this terrain so to overcome this issue you can use the Easter egg built into Bryce where you use an infinite plane that has an ability to sense where a terrain is and it changes its color accordingly but it's sensitive to the resolution of the terrain in a similar way that the curvature filtering is so you need to use very high resolution terrains and the feature will only work on low priority so if you have a multi core processor and you've got the priority set up it will crash because it was never fully implemented a way around this is to fake it which is what we'll look at by modifying the train material and being able to see through the water but this is not entirely straightforward as you'll see because the kind of feedback you get from within the deep taste editor so what I'm going to do first of all is introduce a train in default grey so I'll hold the control key down and click on the little icon there and then I'll apply the material that uh, Art was asking about and had sent me and we'll just have a quick look at what constitutes this material so the first three channels A, B and C are combined when they're in this configuration so that the C channel filters between the A channel and the B channel in this case the A channel and the B channel are both using some curvature filtering within their texture components so in the material editor this is the first layer we control the texture components then if we click on here we can go into the deep texture editor and look at how those components are built up and in this case we've got three components here that make a final combination and that's got that is what is sent back out but there are three channels in each of the components uh, the color channel the alpha channel and the bump channel the bump channel only really has any influence on the bump effect but the alpha channel and the color channel can work in different ways depending how that information is sent back indeed there is another little trick you can do to use the bump channel to make it feed out color information but that I digress that's, that's covered in another video so what we have here in the first component is a curvature filter and if you look in the noise we've got some random linear noise and the phase that disrupts that noise fractal stone so you can see when you've got a filter and noise and phase and then these combined with various blend modes you can have a combination that's quite complex and that will put a burden when it comes to rendering so the more complex the material the more components that it's got to the final combination the longer it'll take to render and likewise you have a similarly complex arrangement here and then the filter is only using two components you can turn on how many components it uses with this little control here and the black and the white then select between the A and the B channel and this gives us uh, a, a texture rich and responsive material with the curvature so depending on the geometry you get different curvature effects depending on the slope you get different curvature effects so this is a, a the advantage of procedural materials although difficult and time consuming to set up they respond to the terrain that you provide through these filters which means that you get different effects with different terrains whereas if you were to just use a texture an image texture while you might be able to apply that quite simply because you use an aerial photograph with some pictures of some fields they will just tend to repeat so if you don't have a very high resolution texture and you have to line them up next to each other the re repetition becomes obvious and the fields will not in any way respond to the terrain you apply them to so if you apply a picture of fields over a mountain you just get fields stretched into a mountain shape whereas in the case of the procedural textures you could use a filter to detect whether there was a mountain peak there and apply a mountain material uh, and if it was flat using slope you could apply 
a field material that was appropriately created. And likewise, you could do the filtering within the textures. But in all of this, there is one channel, the D channel, that is standing alone and is only controlling the ambient. Now, the ambient channel uh, really goes back to the days when processors weren't that powerful and you had to rely on lightening the surface to create the illusion of additional light sources arriving in areas where there was less light. So if you look here in our preview, we've got the direct light, but if we were just to swap that around, we can lighten it up all over with the ambient channel. And in this case, what you would do if you would only had a single light source is you could apply a lower level of ambient to fill in this shadow region here just to get the effect that there was some light arriving from somewhere else but it does tend to make it look like the whole thing is glowing so uh, if possible I tend to avoid using ambient for that purpose and use additional light sources now that the computer is powerful enough to do that rendering and you can then use the ambient channel for something else like a special effect and in this case this is where the shoreline effect is coming in here you might be able to see a bit of white underneath there so now we're at full white for the ambient, so maybe we can see a bit better in this example. Oh yes, there we go. So I'd already turned the ambient up from its default, which was grey, uh, but the preview doesn't really show very much. image is quite small. But you can see the white area here. So the idea is, as you sink this into the ground, the white area stays in the same place. Okay, I'm going to make, make the terrain a bit bigger and move it away, so again, there's a bit more of a sense of scale. You can see now that it's sort of giving us the effect, but we, we need this plane here to be water. So I'll make this uh, transparent and give it some refraction. Then we can we can see maybe, depending on the camera angle, we can see through the water and you can see that it's lighting up underneath and then you can see the ground underneath, which is where we were going with this effect. Now, setting this channel up for ambient here requires us to go into the deep texture editor and it's done through the altitude filter but before we get into that I suppose we should consider the mapping mode now all of the mapping modes in this example are set to world space which means that as we make the terrain larger the material doesn't stretch to fit it you just get more of the surface because it's procedurally generated we've got a virtually an infinite amount of material to go at so as I make this island ever bigger the surface details will just get smaller the only uh, case where that's not quite true is due to curvature because the curvature is responding to the size of the features on the terrain directly so as we enlarge those features the curvature filtering's response will change and scale with those but if they're selecting for other features that aren't scaled to the world then it'll just mean the areas where those features are applied will change. For curvature filtering we need fairly high resolution because it only works on the resolution of the terrain so 512 by 512 for curvature filtering is a little bit coarse and you would tend to see squares uh, on a terrain if you had the camera close where the curvature filtering was switching from one facet of the mesh to another that a slightly higher resolution works better but for the high resolution terrains as I started with in the example they are at 4096 by 4096 terrains that horror made and uh, they have been specifically designed at that resolution to work with curvature filtering Though we don't need to worry too much about that, that's uh, again slightly an aside because we're looking at this edge effect. So what I thought we could do is look at the way of adjusting this and then look at building an edge effect up on just a default material. So I've enlarged this terrain quite large compared with my camera which seems like an appropriate idea because it's now starting to interact with the atmosphere but we're not too worried about setting the sky up either just be aware that you need some ambient channel to drive this effect you can test and show that by changing the color of the ambient channel so you can see this line around the outside edge is just the ambient channel there giving it its glow but because it's supposed to be foamy water it'll sort of work for that because it could be picking up light from elsewhere scattered around and the fact that we can see a bit underneath helps give the illusion that this is where the shore edge is 
Now if I want to change the position of that edge, what you can do is use these transformation tools here. So if we select this transformation tool, we get this little dialog. And this allows us to scale the effect through this channel option. So we can, if we change the scale down here, so it's like lowering the frequency, the effect will spread and then it'll look coarser as it did when the terrain was uh, much smaller because this is all world space scaled so it's an absolute scaling so as we change the size of the train the effect remains the same so if we increase the frequency like so then the effect will become much finer and restrained to a smaller area so we're scaling the effect on the terrain uh, which is necessary because being world spaced scaling the train won't make any difference to the scale of the textures applied to it the other thing that we can do here I'll just reset it to where I was is change the offset now the offset value for Y works in the opposite direction to what you might think it would work so if I make this negative 5 the effect rises up now in the uh, the last development round we did swap this round and Clay H. Brush suggested changing it to the case where plus 5 made it move up which seems like a logical thing but unfortunately because it had so many legacy materials in the library already it just broke loads of materials so I had to stay with this odd situation but bear in mind it's an offset what's happening is it's offsetting the textures position so the 5 position here is having minus 5 applied to it so that would make it 0 so this point is now behaving as it would if as if it was the origin height so that would be 0 so when it's here which as you can see is the case so that explains how the offset works but just try and remember that it works backwards to the way you think it's going to work so to raise the level up make it go negative and to push it down you make it a positive so if we raise this up and we're out of the preview but it still might be visible on the terrain because the terrain's so much larger now so you can see the shoreline has effectively through applying a minus 12 moved up the terrain previewing these is key to setting these materials up so if we go back into the material lab here uh, we can sometimes do things like change it to the actual selection and then uh, it's a bit small so hold I think shift and control down and you can use the mouse to adjust its position a bit and w drag the mouse towards you and eventually it'll make the thing a bit bigger and you can get some clue with what's going on then hopefully so we'll change the offset and we can probably just make out in the preview if we get the position right if I use uh, turn render with neutral sky off we can get to see it in the actual sky and the haze is now getting in the way so I'll just alt key the haze intensity off and then go back into the material and now see if I can see where the see just before anti-alias is where that band is uh, so we can position that up and down accordingly if I lower the frequency again it'll broaden it so if I go like so see if I can see it now okay here, here the issue is that a combination of things has occurred I've lowered the frequency so it's broadened band but now it's scaled out of sight so if I bring this back down again it'll probably reappear at some point and we can go back to positioning it let's see if I bring it back down to zero I'll be able to find it again oh there it is it's too broad so at one percent there go negative you can see its position now so because it's a scaling factor you'd have to decide that that was the scale you were going to have it at so what I think you can quickly glean from this is it's quite fiddly to adjust the altitude and it's quite a coarse control if you use this texture control here and you can change it to object space which will then mean that the entire object is being dealt with and the zero points where the base of the object is which is currently under the water and you can try and work it that way but then because this scaling combines other effects so one of these is going to have a a filter effect in it somewhere here we go stucco noise to create the patchiness in the edge of the wave uh, this will then be scaled to object space which means the effect will scale when you make the train larger or smaller which 
might be a little bit inconvenient because if you start chaining islands together and you enlarge them and shrink them the water edge effect you want to be consistent for the entire water surface because the edge effect is trying to fool you into thinking that it's the water that's creating the foam not the terrain so you don't want the foam to change size with the size of the island so this is the reason I've avoided using object space though it's easier to position things using the altitude filter in object space and stuck with world space which is a little bit fiddly. The main reason it's fiddly is because as you can see with the altitude filter you can't see any output from this filter. You can't see where it's adjusted to. It's uh, in an extreme range and that was to place the uh, the band at, in a quite a uh, narrow position. So you have to adjust these with the numbers and, and not look to look at the filter because you don't get much feedback from these windows anymore because it's so far out of its usual range. If we reset its usual range you see there's the grayscale there and this gives you a clue what you're doing but when it gets to the point where it's actually in a useful range you don't get much feedback. We'll come to that you can you can work towards this bit by bit uh, so it's, it's often easier to work towards a solution than it is to reverse engineer something that's already been set up to that end then let us shrink this island down to a more useful size because then we can have the haze back on just click on that to switch that back on and sink it into the water a bit so how far above the water am I now Not quite a bit so there's my water plane down there so here we go look at this all right that's a more of a sensible scale for the default sky that we're running you can just see underneath the water here and then I'm going to modify this material and set it to the default grey. I can't see anything in my preview because I moved everything so go back to uh, current selection. I'll see the terrain then and reset the view. So that's my terrain in default grey. Just check out of there, give that a quick render and the aim now is to place our shoreline effect along that edge. So imagine you've got whatever terrain effects in the first three channels and you can just focus on the final channel the an ambient channel so what I want for this is hold the shift key down click on the name and go to basic and we'll click one of these basic altitude filters now what you can do to aid your development of this is also use the color channel here in the diffuse uh, to sort of get your bearings so what I would suggest is we look in here and set this to say 20%. Uh, we can also already see some uh, altitude filtering coming in and you can see that the colors also line up with the alpha output. The alpha output will drive our ambient channel. So I'll turn that up there ready to receive an output and it'll give an ambient output. I'll leave the output in white and we're already driving it from the Skylab there. I'll go into this control now and you can see we've got a filter set there. That's the altitude and the output the final combination not doing anything so we'll probably use a second combination but we'll set this component up first so I want alpha output I don't need bump output and I'll set this to red green and blue go to the filter and lower the altitude if the filters are not visible click on these corners where these dots are and the noise phase and filter output uh, will the controls will appear and that will let you adjust things. So you can see now I just wound that control up and it's pushed that down. So this is our zero point and then there's some colors there and if we look at the alpha output we've got black and white there. So check out of that and check out of that and we'll see what we've got. So where it was blue at the top it's gone white and then we've got the green and the red so we can see that if we want the shoreline effect to work it wants to be working somewhere in this red region and not giving us the white alpha output that's driving this top and the red region's not too bad for this scale already but you can see it could do with being compressed down a bit further so I'll go back into the DPTH editor and look at this potential for compressing that further so I could wind this control up here because it's pushed the red down but that's not the output we want. We want this to be a, a white color. So we can do this by changing things around. So we could go and drag that one across to here, go uh, subtract, and then if we, if we take that 
away from this and we make this all white for example this is one possible solution here well, so all I need to do is set this up so that it's going to be all white actually I could just do that with nothing in fact I don't need to even go that complex at the moment and I'll just set this one to sign reset that and lift that side of the filter up it goes white at the bottom there and if I check out of that check out of that now what we've got is a white edge just there that's gone yellow and the reason for that changing color there is because I switched the color channel off so I switched the color channel back on but don't turn that one on because that'll be a subtraction then it'll get complicated I should be able to show that we've now got the blue at the top and the white at the bottom okay it's not looking much like the foam and we've also got the issue that it continues to be white underneath the water and we really want it to stop there in a band so this is where we could instead of using just a full white here for example we could change this and use altitude again so we're going to use nothing the thing is if we use sign we get patches and if if like i did before maybe maybe stucco noise for example and make that 2d or 3d then we get patches in this i'll just reset that so when we subtract the two we get blobs and uh, I'm going to change this to altitude reset that and and then, then we've got these blobs that we can control with the altitude filter here and keep them low down so that gives gives us a patchiness to our foam effect so those patches are probably a bit large at the moment so I'll go into the material here and then go into the noise here and increase the frequency Let's see um, there are quite a few other videos there for how you adjust the things in the deep text editor I'm trying to keep things focused on positioning this foamy edge effect so because the altitude filters combining with one another I've now got it so that the foam cuts out as it goes deeper but it's still a bit on the broad side so what we need to do now is narrow it to the very water's edge and that can be done using these controls for example but uh, I just need this on the actual selection I think if we can see on the actual selection here we go with the island and that's too far away so hold the control and the shift key down and wind the camera in closer and then try and position it so we can see a bit of the shoreline that's that's not the easiest thing to do I'll wind it back again right you can see that edge there but we can't see under the water so I'll have to switch that to not rendering with the neutral ground could try increasing the frequency of the uh, the scaler here so it should make making the band narrower and then I can move it up and down using this control as I say negative it's, it's actually lifted it up there which is what I was looking for so what I'm trying to do is scale these two so they hit the edge there and then it's actually gone a little bit too high I could just cheat and at this point lift the water off the zero point which would be a valid way of doing it but if you want to make a universal material for this uh, and, and to work easily then it's probably better to adjust it so everything's on the zero point so what I shall do is lower that back down to the point where it's just going under the water so let's see how that looks now okay so I've now got the shoreline coming up the edge a bit and going under the water frequency of that stucco noise effect is looking a little bit high now so I could just modify this I can add octaves to it and that'll lower its frequency um, but it's also combining in such a way that uh, it's, it's getting brighter and brighter so to just be whiter so we'll try some multifactorial maybe no minimum 90 will displacement max just try some different options to see which one's giving us some darker areas otherwise I'm gonna have to modify things here let's try multifractal octaves 2 and we have the option of putting more filtering in the final combination could you smooth clip here let's try that one and then reset that filter and then I can reduce the effect of that through the filter now here's a little bug I've never got to the bottom of sometimes the filter image disappears altogether and then reappears when you modify the 
channel on C, which doesn't do anything except for quantization, I think. I think it might be involved in one other thing, and I can't quite remember what that is. But anyway, you see Smooth Clip. I've reduced the intensity of that and hopefully spread the dark areas out a bit. So when I see it on this preview now, it'll look a bit more natural. Now, I've not put a particularly uh, sophisticated water material in here, so it looks a little bit sharply defined, that edge. But if you have a water material, then we'll just... Uh, get the water here and modify this so if you get the water material and say made it um, a volume material so it got darker or just added some transparent darkness to it let's see it's gonna be difficult I'll add it in the volume channel as well so make that dark blue then the the lightness under the edge is is not so affected the reason this material has now gone like that rather strangely is because I'm not actually providing a valid color output at the moment and if you do that it tends to go a bit weird so that was the only reason that had gone patchy and when I'd switched to the other material so you see now that I've focused the illuminated edge driven through the global ambient color here down to the edge and there's a bit of light coming through underneath and if the water had some bump then that would break the effect up and uh, there's a pattern put in it through the use of this uh, noise function which is here so this stucco noise and you could change that to say fractal well obviously that's a bit a bit extreme I'd have to change the altitude filter in there to to get the pattern appearing then you'd have to recalibrate the rest of these so it's only through that process here you go see getting the, the subtraction right to get the effect and then remembering to give it some colour out but I'll just do it through the grey there so it doesn't go speckly like it did last time then you can get different effects on here and if they're they're too fine uh, and you don't want to alter the overall scale through this then go back in here and modify the frequency and you can see you can stretch those patches out using the frequency and then hopefully they'll look a little bit more natural when you compare them with the scale of your island so I hope art that has helped you but you can always provide me with more questions uh, relating to this topic but as you can see it's it's quite involved but if you pick it apart into its separate components and work on each one individually and provide yourself with some um, guides by using the color output then uh, you can position these things and then and then work on the individual bits one at a time and sort of work your way towards a solution which is how I go about it when I produce these materials okay then cheers now hope you found that interesting and useful and uh, you'll be experimenting with this in Bryce 7.1 Pro cheers